What's up, bootstrappers? This is Ryan Nickel coming at you with another coaching video, number 52. Woo! So I finally got my rig back. No more of me holding the, the camera right here when I'm driving all over the place. So uh, yeah, this today's coaching tip is follow up like your life depended on it. So I had a coaching call today with a lady, and uh, so the way that I when I coach, I take on where they're at, and I look at how I can help them better where they're at. And uh, the, most people come to me because they want to understand how to do subject to purchases, skinny deals, skinny transactions, where they can be the middleman and cash flow of the properties. So she came to me differently. She wanted to learn how to wholesale and do that kind of stuff. And so I've been with her for about three months now, and and she was kind of slow going. She didn't know anything about real estate, needed to get up and going. And so it's it's all about the mechanics of the process, and now it's systems. And so I'm talking to her about systems, and, and I'm like, look, walk me through what you're doing right now. How are you getting your leads? And she's, she told me how she did her leads, and uh, we had to tweak a lot there. There's some stuff we had to tweak there. And I said, now tell me about the leads that you followed up with, and they told you that they're not interested right now. How are you getting back to them? Well, I, I called them back. When? Well, I don't know. Just whenever I, I, I guess I think about it. Okay, not good enough. Definitely not good enough. How does that conversation go when you're talking to them? Well, I just say, you know, I'll call you back sometime in the future. And I'm like, okay. So two things here. One, you got to get better at your follow-up. Like you got to follow up like your life depends on it. And then number two is you got to make sure that when you're getting off the phone with them, you're getting a commitment for the next time you're going to call. The way it sounds like with me is when I call them is, you know, hey, I understand, you know, I'm, I'm still interested in your property. You know, uh, this is the guy that actually had a phone, a phone call with him last night. He has a home that uh, tenants went through and they just trashed the property. He had to be a victim. There's a lot of damage to it. He just recently bought the house, so it's a brand new house, and they destroyed it. And so he's going to have to, he told me, he's like, look, I can't afford to take a loss on this property, so I'm going to work nights and weekends, and it's going to take me a couple of months to get going. I said, great. You know what? I'm really interested. I would really like to have a call with you prior to you listening with the real estate agent because I can save both of us some money if I decide to buy this property. And that would be great. I said, how about I call you end of June, beginning of July? And he goes, well, actually, I think I'm going to be done closer to the beginning of June. And I said, great. I'll call you then the end of May just to make sure. And I can get inside to see it and see you know, how, how, all the good work that you've done there. And then we can go from, from there as far as making an offer that works and makes sense for both of us. So I got the commitment of when I'm going to call this guy back. And then I shared with this gal when I, when I was coaching with her, I said, look, I made, when I looked at my deals last year, over 30% of my deals came from uh, new uh, referrals. So when I was looking at, or not referrals, excuse me, follow up. So I'm going through and I, and I categorize, I got new deals, referrals, and I got, I got follow up. Over 30% came from me just following up with people. In fact, I'm closing on, we're closing on a, uh, a deal, it's a condo, we're closing on a condo this week where I'm going to be simultaneous or I'm going to, it's contingent. So this condo deal, we're going to move a guy that has just a beat up piece of crap house that has nowhere to go. We're going to move him into this condo. We're going to pay for his condo. And then we're going to take the proceeds from the house of it, the house that we're going to buy from him and pay off the condo. So he has a free and clear condo plus some cash in the bank. I've been following up with this guy for almost two years now. Uh, he's become a kind of a close close friend or a family friend. We've had him over for dinner, Thanksgiving, different things like that. Kids, you know, recitals and stuff like that. And, um, but this is a deal that we've been following up on. And I, and I shared with her on my coaching call, I said, look, you know what? There's a lady that, that I've been, I followed up with last year that, no, actually this was two years ago. This was two years ago. I followed up with her and it was, it was painless. It was absolutely painless. I go, you need to have a system for your follow up. And what does that look like? You're going to be calling these people twice, you know, or not twice, but you need to call them like at least once a month and or text. You have to be in front of them because all everyone else is gonna give up. And, and the person who gives up loses. The people that, the person that doesn't give up wins. And I said, it can, be, it can be this simple. All I did was record a voice broadcast and I stayed in the, I just said, I said, hey, this is Ryan. We talked a while ago about your, about your property. I'm still really interested. Give me a call if it's still available. And then I would send that out to, I used um, slide broadcast and I would just voice bless that to all of the numbers that I had. Or I would change it up and it would be, Hey, this is Ryan. I know we haven't spoken in a while, but things on my end have changed. I might be able to give you a better offer for the house or for the property. Give me a call. Hey, what's up, Leticia? And this one particular lady, she called me back. She's like, hey, hey, I missed your call. I'm sorry, but yeah, what's changed? We're still interested in selling. And I'm like, oh, 
Ooh, man, this lady. I love her to death. And I ended up closing it. It was a $100,000 single-wide um, trailer in a mobile home park. $100,000 in a mobile home park. And it just happened to be that I was on the coast here in California. And the average one's itself between one hundred uh, hundred and thirty to 150000 And we got it under contract for, for 1000 And I just I immediately started advertising the contract and there was a lady that was there searching in that in that park that weekend and she called me up she's like um i'm here now can i look at the property and so she went to the property manager they gave her two of the property she called me back she's like i want this what do i have to do and i'm like uh 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 knowing not knowing what i know now you know back then this is like two years ago i'm like um they're selling for 150 i'm like uh we're selling it for 105 um if in order for the and she already knew the price, like I, I already priced it at one hundred five. She's like, "What do I do?" I'm like, uh, "Cut me a check for five thousand dollars, and I'll take it off the internet, and then I'll, I'll get the contract and paperwork in the mail to you." And, I mean, believe it or not, this lady, not knowing who I was, no contract in hand, nothing, she just cuts me a check. She overnights me a check for five grand. I get the check, and I'm like, "Holy crap! Who does that?" I mean, talk about serious trust. And so, anyway, we closed that one. But it all came from follow-up, and that was a deal that I had been following up on. Hey, what's up, Eric? For, I want to say at least three and a half months. Some of my deals I follow up with longer. In fact, well, oh, geez, man, this is like the week of follow-ups. We're closing on, a, on, a, on two houses on 10 acres here on Friday. And this was a probate one that I had went out and looked at last... Um, gosh, almost about 18 months ago. It was it was it was before Thanksgiving. It was like is like right before Thanksgiving of 20, uh, 2016. Then I followed back up with him again in uh, in June of last year, and he still wasn't quite ready. And then um, about three weeks ago, I, I called him back up. I said, "Hey man, I'm still interested in your property?" And he's like, "I still got it." I said, "Perfect, man. Let's let's go ahead and, and uh, come out there and see where we're at." And we we made a deal. We're actually getting two tractors on that one. <laughs> coming it's on 10 acres so we're getting two tractors we're getting a backhoe and then this huge old i don't even know what they're called this tractor and it has these discs behind it so you can disc the field but anyway that's a great that's a great deal man there's there's gonna make uh the guy that i'm selling this to he has some great plans to split that up and sell it for um basically sell one of the lots in the house for exactly what he's buying it for so it's a sweet 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 deal um so anyway just wanted to give you guys this comp this, this this encouragement to follow up and have a system of follow up. In fact, I've actually recently hired a coach for myself because my follow up game, it's not that strong. I mean, I'm good. I let intuition guide and where I'm going to go. But as far as having like a system in place to go ahead and hit every single one, I got deals that are falling through the crack. Um, the slide broadcast is good, but it's only as good as the, as the input that I put into it. So if I'm not putting my information in there to, uh, to, to do it, ah, see, I got room to improve. So I'm, I'm basically preaching to myself because. I know how important this is. I'm I'm closing on a deal on 10 acres that 18 months ago I, I met the guy for the first time, and I'm here. I am following up and closing these deals. So you can be doing the exact same thing. Now, if you're just getting started, you're even a step ahead of us because you can you can create that system of follow up right from the get go. Just remember, you're one deal away from changing your entire financial future. That's how lucky you are. This is amazing. I love this business. I love this industry. And hey, Letitia, I think I'm, I think we're preaching to every single person that that's in doing real estate, man. It just unless they got their, their their stuff dialed in, we all that stuff slipped through the cracks one way or another. So yeah, but guys, I'm gonna go inside, say hi to my beautiful family. Now I got my rig back. I'm so excited. It was like broken down for like 10 days. They couldn't they couldn't figure out what it was. It was a small little little chip on my computer, little relay. But all right, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right. This will be a quick one. I don't know what kind of reception I'm going to have driving through the country here. So I felt inclined to go grab a bite to eat at a restaurant that I'd love to eat at. It has some nice little street tacos. Man, that's kind of like kind of like my addiction is some street tacos with some horchata. Mmm, que bien. Comida riquísima. All right, so... I go to this restaurant and there's this dude hanging outside and you know that they're homeless. You can tell by the way that they look. So I'm walking out. I'm walking by the guy. I'm like, hey, how you doing? He's like, oh, hey, is this, is this place good food? Do they have good food here? I'm like, yeah, it's great food. Why don't you come on inside and try it? Oh, no, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait for my wife. Hey, man, no problem. Take care. I go inside and, and you know what? I'm like, you know what? No, I'm going to go back to this guy. So I go back out. And I'm like, hey, man, when you and your wife, when your wife gets here, come on inside. It's on me, okay? Like, come on in. He's like, really? I'm like, totally. Come on in. And he's like, okay, I'll do that. What's up, Eric? 
and whoever else I can't see. So I get my food, I go, I sit down, and I and, and I'm eating, and he walks in with his wife. And and I'm like, oh beautiful. So I go over to him, and they're kind of sheepish, they're kind of feeling uncomfortable because yeah, they're homeless. And you know, they're they're carrying all their possessions in a bag and stuff like that. Not all their possessions. I'm sure they have some kind of like, you know, I don't know where they're staying, but they're definitely um, living on the streets. So anyway, um, they're just, they're kind of feeling uncomfortable. Like, my like, guys, order whatever you want. It's completely on me. It's my treat. I would love to treat you. Just please have a warm meal on me. And, um, and they, and they did. And I, and I just like, you know what, how, how fortunate I feel to be in that kind of a position. Like, like I brought tears to my eyes. I'm like, man. I just, I love helping people and it's just, it's just who I am. So anyway, I, I said to the husband and wife, I said, Hey, you guys are more than welcome to eat by yourself and, and just enjoy the meal or you can join me at my table. I'm just sitting by myself. Hey, Crystal. And, uh, he's like, well, we'll, we'll come, we'll come sit with you. So I'm sitting there and I, and I met his name is Steve and then I met his wife, Laura and I'm like, Oh, Hey, great. You know, I got a sister in law. Her name is Laura. Is that, you know, is, are you named after Dr. Shivago? She's like, Oh my gosh, no one knows that. So wait, we had this connection and stuff like that. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm talking to them both and, and Steve goes, so what do you do? And I was waiting for this question because I didn't want to look like I was preying on them and, and using them. So I just wanted to get to know these guys. Just, you know, hey, what's your story? How'd you guys meet? You know, what brings you to the Yuba City of all places? And, you know, I got all that stuff and finally the conversation had turned to me. So Ryan, what do you do? I said, I buy, now here's the key word. I buy distressed run down, abandoned, beat up properties with or without squatters in them. I buy those all day long. Oh, oh, you, you do, huh? We, we know a lot of those properties. I'm like, you do? Oh yeah, yeah, we're, well, you know, we're, we're, we're on, we're from the street. So we, we, we know where these houses are at. We see them all the time. I said, I'll tell you what guys. All right. Whenever I cross the county line here, it's like, Cell phone coverage, all of a sudden, like, like no one wants to cover the county line. I'm like, no, I'm not covering. No, it's not me. No, it's you. No, I'm not you. So anyway, I cover the county line and just, I drop the call. So, anyway, so I tell these guys, I'm like, hey, you, you guys know where abandoned properties are at? Boarded up or not? Or in there, and, and they're, may, they, they may be squatters or there may not be squatters. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know a lot of those. I'm like, guys, that's what I buy. But there's only one of me and I can only drive around for so long before I, you know, I, I have to do other things tell you what if you guys find me abandoned properties with or without squatters I'll pay you $500 per house you what what I'm like yeah every house that I closed that you gave me a referral to I'll pay you $500 oh my gosh well and then here's the funny part they both pull out their cell phones Ryan what's your phone number <laughs> so I give him my phone number and then they both text, or the wife texts me, and then I, I text Steve, and I just, and then I, I, so I text both of them. I said, "Hey, man, it was a pleasure meeting you guys. It was, a, it was an honor to start, to share lunch with you. Uh, again, just to reiterate, if you guys find any any vacant properties, just text me the address. I'll do all the work. When I close on it, I'll give you guys five hundred dollars." And he's like, "Wow, wow, <laughs> we know a lot. We can get started today if you want." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, of course you guys can. Please do. I would love to pay you guys some money to find some properties. So these are my homeless house hunters. Now, of course, I didn't name them that, and you know, but in my phone, I have Steve as the first name, and then under business, I put homeless house hunter, and then in the city, I put Yuba City. So he's a you know YC for Yuba City. So he's a YC homeless house hunter, and the same thing for Laura. There, she's a a YC homeless house hunter. And man, I gotta tell you. It is one of the best resources that you guys can do. So you find guys, you don't have to treat them to lunch or anything like that. He just happened to be right there. There are guys that I have done this with. Uh, I, I paid a gal one time. She wanted some beer money. She's like flagged me down in front of one of her houses. I'm sure you've seen the video. It's on this page here where she wanted beer money. And I'm like, I'm not giving you beer money. I do not condone that lifestyle or anything except for she's like, well, she's like, what do you do? I'm like, I buy houses. It's like, I'm on my truck. You can see it. She's like, well, I know where a bunch are at. I'm like, get in the car. Let's go get some beer. And so I went and bought her like, like I don't know, I think she wanted like a pint of whiskey or something like that. So I went and bought her a pint of whiskey after, of course, she had to, she had to earn it. After she, because uh, if I gave her cash for, for, for the information, she was going to go out and buy the beer anyway or the, the, the liquor. So anyway, yeah, she gave me a lot of properties. 
unfortunately, I never followed up on those properties because it's down in Sacramento. It's not my market. I'm not down there aggressively. So any of you down there that are still in Sacramento, I, I got a, I got about 15 properties that are all vacant and boarded up that she gave me that uh, we should talk. They're North Highlands is where this is at. Um, no, this area wasn't North Highlands. This was off of um, uh, like, like, shoot. Like... Marysville Boulevard, that area. So it's like, it's in Sacramento. It's, it's in between, it's, it's south of 80. So, but anyway, I digress. I'm telling you guys, Homeless House Hunters, that's a great resource for you guys. There are a lot of guys that are on the street. They know where these abandoned properties are at. They may be staying in an abandoned property or their friends are. So they know where, they're, where to, to find these properties. They can be your eyes and your ears on the street. So do not overlook the guys that are there. And I... Like I said, I it just was an opportunity, to, and I took it, and you guys can do the exact same thing because all you need, guys, is just one deal. Bootstrappers, I'm telling you, one deal will change your entire financial future. The uh, There was a house that I picked up from a homeless lady last year. And she wanted $700 from it. It was her actual house, but she was homeless because the house was all condemned and boarded up and stuff like that. And I ended up making... Um, that was a bad deal for me. I broke even on it. I think I made like 200 bucks. Um, I know my, I, I learned my lesson from that one. Doing it again, I wouldn't have done it the same way. I, I thought I was going to rehab it. Then mid rehab, I realized that I was in over my head and I turned it into a rental and I barely broke even, um, before we ended up selling the property at, like I said, break even. So we're getting rid of it. Anyway, I'm almost to my destination up here in Oroville. I love you guys. I love serving you guys. I love being the, you know, part of this community. If there's anything I can do, just go ahead and post it on the the main wall and I'll do my best to give you that information. But in the meantime, get creative, get out there, make some money and I'll